Hello friend, it's Mark out on the back 40. And in this episode, I'm gonna go over the three different uh, homemade hunting blinds that I have out here on the property to help you decide maybe how you wanna build yours, if you wanna build yours. I'll maybe get some ideas. I'm gonna tell you things I've tried before. Uh, kind of the quick little good, bad, ugly of uh, DIY deer blinds. The blind behind me right here, this one is about 20 years old. Actually, it's more than 20 years old. It's probably, gosh, pumping on 25. I probably built it in 98, so however old that is. But um, it was the first blind I built. I actually didn't even live at the property here yet. I built it somewhere else and I put it on a trailer and transferred it here. Um, but it's been rebuilt a couple of times. So the main structure of this is, it, it, first off, it's portable. See this down here? There's a slide there and I'll show a closer video of that. Um, so it's on slides. It's built out of four by four womanized boards. That's the, the runners on the bottom and then the uprights going all the way up. The uprights go from the bottom here all the way through the inside to the top and then support the roof. And so that main structure has been there the whole time. Now, what I put on the outside of it has changed over time. The first time I built it, I used OSB. Do not use OSB. I used it because it was cheap and then I wrapped tar paper around it and just stapled the tar paper on with um, an industrial stapler, not like your paper stapler, but uh, that worked okay for maybe 10 years. And then it started to degrade. The OSB started swelling up, some moisture got on it, the roof got bad and everything. And then I ended up just uh, doing a lot of maintenance on it all the time. And then uh, when I didn't do the maintenance, it just rotted away. So this one about five years ago, I rebuilt it and I used on, so I took all the outside off and I, what I would suggest to you is build it right the first time because then you don't have to maintain it. You don't have to mess around with it. I used three quarter inch treated plywood around the outside of it. And then you can see uh, it got stained and then we stapled onto it. Uh, my parents had old Christmas trees that, you know, they get new, new artificial Christmas trees every few years or something. So I took all those, uh, limbs that come with that and i just again stapled those all over the outside because we you can see we have a lot of pine trees around here and so it's really good uh camouflage um so three quarter inch osb and then the windows let's go in and look at the windows a second so here are a few of the details on the inside first off the door i made the door really wide and basically i made the shell of the blind you can see that there's like one piece of, of wood, one piece of plywood all around it. And then I just took a chainsaw and I cut straight lines. I think it was a chainsaw, might have been a circular saw, but I cut straight lines and then I just laid over this cedar trim board right here over it uh, to create the, the seam right there. And then just a couple simple little <laughs> flippers to hold it closed. Okay, but we want to talk about the windows. So here's the windows. The first time I built this blind, I used plexiglass windows and there was no frame to them. All I did is I put them up here and they came down and uh, kind of dangled there. And the plexiglass over time got scratched. When you try to clean it, it scratches a little bit. And then when you um, have it in the sun for 10 years, it starts to get a little milky. So these ones I built myself, this is cedar. I had the pieces of glass cut at the local lumber yard. I used what's called a Craig jig, K-R-E-G, to put these together. So I just measured the openings that were there and I built these and put them together. And I'll just do a little video here so you can kind of see how it was built. Um, it's nothing fancy, right? So I just put a little stop right there. And then here is kind of a key I found on Amazon this seal here and the reason I want to seal is I don't I hate coming out here in September when there's all the darn stink bugs and wasps in here when I'm trying to clean out the blinds getting them ready for the season and so I wanted to seal these things up really well and so I did that okay so that's kind of the door you can see the bottom I guess the detail here here's the floor I put this frame on it to have something to screw the boards to i mean it's not super complicated and there's just the four by four here two by fours for support a two by four in the middle because you've got four foot wide this way and you know six foot this way but that way you could use two pieces of plywood and this is where the seam was okay and so here's around Again, same, same windows. 
Now everything's pretty much the same. There's nothing uh, much to go over here. I just threw a shelf in here. And then uh, this is kind of just some of the stuff that people put in their workout rooms. I just kind of cut that up. It's kind of that interlacing stuff. You can get Menards or Lowe's or whatever. And then painted the inside black because I wanted it to be as dark as possible in here so they can't silhouette me. Um, and then we have a uh, wood stove in here and I'm gonna do a different video on the wood stoves. So it's not too long. All right, let's go to another blind. This is the second homemade blind and uh, I made a lot of mistakes on this one. I had built that first one that we just covered a long time ago when I rebuilt it. I put a lot of time and effort into it and I did it right. This blind, I wanted to build another one and because I really like the other, the first one that I just showed you, but I did it in a hurry and I did it cheap, cheaper. Instead of using three quarter inch plywood, womanized plywood, treated plywood, whatever you call it, <clears throat> I used half inch. And I would not do that again because, especially on the floor, the floor is creaky. I could do more support, but again, now I got to get underneath there and, and do more work, which I'm not looking for work. I don't have time for work. So um, those are my frustrations with this one. And I, I, I built this one initially three feet off the ground with legs under it, set it out in the field, and thought it'd be just like the first one that we went over, which has never tipped over. Woke up one morning after 40 mile an hour winds, this one had tipped over, boom, sitting on, the, on its back. And you can see right up over here, see a little crack up there? That's where a stump that was behind it broke through it. Um, I got a hook on the front of this to try to figure out how to set it back up. And when I pulled it back up, all the legs on the bottom of it broke. So now I have to set it on the ground. And again, I just made my, I just made too much work for myself. It's just, I shouldn't do that. Don't, don't, my suggestion is don't try and cut corners. Don't go cheap. Build it right the first time. Um, otherwise it just gets really, really frustrating. So getting in and out of this blind is a little noisy because the floor creaks a little bit. But other than that, it's, it's nice. I mean, it's great with a wood stove. The windows are the same as the other one. The windows work great. Um, everything else works really good. So um, that's my only comment on that is build it heavy and it'll last for a long time. And if you're gonna put it off the ground a little bit, maybe think about staking it down. Uh, just drive in a T-post right next to one of the legs and wrap wire around it just to kind of hold on to it is what I would suggest. Now I am in the third blind. We just had this one built last spring. It's only a year old. And I had somebody else build this one. Somebody who's got skills to actually build. He's a builder. <laughs> Not me. I never could have done this thing. It's a beautiful blind. This is my favorite blind. But uh, it costs, it has the appropriate cost with it too. But um, so this is kind of the D, the last DIY blind, and this one is actually right by the house. It's uh, really convenient to get to. Um, shot a nice little buck out of here this year. Uh, saw plenty of deer, so it's uh, it's in a good place too. So this one will not be able to be moved. It is anchored in the ground. I wanted if I wanted this one to be a good blind. Like I would never have to do anything with it. I could hunt in it whenever I want to hunt in it. If I get home late from work, I can hop out and hunt in it. Um, if I just need to get away in the middle of the summertime somewhere, I can run out here too. So um, I really like this blind. So I'll just kind of, you know, I'll do a video. You can kind of see how some of it is put together. Um, but how I wanted this done is with steel on the outside and the roof. Because what I have found is that is the weak point in the blinds that 15, 20 years down the road, you have to end up doing something and I did not want to do that. Mark here in his mid fifties um, is thinking about Mark, God willing, makes it to his mid seventies, is not gonna to have to do anything with this blind. So I hope future Mark is happy with today Mark 
um, that he doesn't have to do any maintenance on this blind. He can hobble up here, an old man, and and uh, hunt anytime he wants and hobble back and not have to worry about any maintenance ever. So that's the goal with this. So you can see it's all two by fours, steel, a real outdoor rated door. Um, I'm sure some things will rot over time and have to be replaced, but in general, it's pretty rock solid. And another one of the big differences is the windows that we use in here. I bought these windows, and I'll do a separate video where I review these windows. So look for that if you want more information. I love these windows. These are great windows. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the uh, that's the three DIY blinds that I have out here. I had built two other ones 20 years ago and I bulldozed those over and pushed them over and they're laying out in the in the field because I went cheap on them. I, I used uh, OSB and tar paper and over time they just degraded too much. It's just easier to knock them down and get some new ones. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the summary of the DIY blinds. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. I'll answer them and get back to you. Um, or if you have any comments, I'd, I'd love to hear comments too. So um, I hope that helps you kind of decide what you want to do uh, for a DIY blind. Maybe it gives you some ideas uh, for yours. Um, but there's a couple other videos you should probably watch. Number one is the one about redneck blinds. I have three redneck blinds out here. You should watch that video because it's kind of if you think about buying a pre-made blind. And then the other video is I'm going to compare DIY blinds to pre-bought blinds, you know, like stuff from redneck or whoever. And then um, kind of give you my summary and what you should think about uh, before you build your next blind. Thanks.